Hey everyone, I'm Mohammed Hamama. Welcome back to your ASCP prep camp. Today, we're diving into the third episode of our clinical enzyme series, focusing on pancreatic enzymes. We'll explore lipase, p-type amylase, and trypsin. Ready to boost your ASCP knowledge? Let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on your exam prep journey. And check out our store, it helps us keep creating great content for you. Lipase, often abbreviated as LIP, is a fascinating enzyme. Let's start with its structure and properties. Lipase is a single-chain glycoprotein found in the pancreas. It weighs approximately 48 kilodaltons. Its isoelectric point is around 5.8. The LIP gene is located on chromosome 10. Pancreatic LIP concentration is significantly higher, about 5,000-fold, compared to other tissues, with a serum concentration gradient roughly 20,000-fold. Activation and Specificity For lipase to achieve full catalytic activity, it requires two important elements. Bile salts, these are essential for its activation. Colipase, a small protein secreted by pancreatic acinar cells. Colipase is crucial for lipase function and can even be sourced from other species for in vitro activation, which is a useful property in analytical assays. Hydrolysis of glycerolesters. Lipase's main function is to break down glycerolesters of long chain fatty acids. Here's how it works. It targets ester bonds at carbons 1 and 3, known as the alpha positions. This reaction yields 2 moles of fatty acids and 1 mole of 2 acylglycerol, beta monoglyceride, per substrate. The beta monoglyceride can spontaneously isomerize to the alpha form, allowing further breakdown. Mechanism of action Lipase's activity is influenced by several factors. Surface area its effectiveness depends on the surface area of the dispersed substrate. Bile acids, these prevent interference by other proteins by lining the substrate surface. Colipase, this binds to bile salts, forming a complex that anchors lipase to the substrate. Regulation, the secretion of lipase, colipase, and bile acids is controlled by the release of cholecystokinin in secretin. Clinical Implications Lipase plays a crucial role in the body, and its absence can lead to significant health issues. A total absence of lipase results in fat malabsorption and severe steatorrhea. Lipase exists in at least two isoforms, though their exact nature remains unknown. Diagnostic test Lipase measurement is important for diagnosing acute pancreatitis. Serum measurement, recommended for acute pancreatitis diagnosis. Sensitivity and specificity, clinical sensitivity ranges from 80% to 100%, depending on the cutoff, with specificity also varying within the same range. Timing and peaks. Following an acute pancreatitis attack, lipase levels change predictably. Increase, serum lipase activity rises within 4 to 8 hours. Peak, peaks at around 24 hours. Decline, Decreases within 7 to 14 days, with increases reported to range from 2 to 50 times the upper reference limit. Specificity and advantages. Prolonged elevation, unlike serum alpha amylase, lipase levels remain elevated longer, providing a more specific diagnostic marker. Diagnostic specificity, lipase activity over 3 times the upper reference limit is a specific finding for acute pancreatitis, provided there is no renal failure. Diagnostic replacement. In the emergency department. Lipase is the preferred test it should replace alpha amylase as the initial test for acute pancreatitis. Unnecessary tests, obtaining both serum alpha amylase and lipase levels is redundant. Other considerations. Various conditions and factors can affect lipase levels. Pancreatic duct obstruction, conditions like calculus or carcinoma can raise serum lipase activity. Glomerular filtration rate, a reduced rate can increase lipase levels. Macroforms, rare inaccuracies may occur due to enzyme binding to IgG. 
biliary tract investigation or opiate treatment, these can also affect lipase levels. Methods for measuring lipase activity There are several methods for measuring lipase activity, each with its advantages and challenges. Titrometric methods Lipase hydrolyzes fatty acids from an emulsion of olive oil or oleic acid, and the liberated fatty acids are titrated with dilute alkali. Turbidometric method measures the reduction in turbidity of an oleic acid emulsion. Spectrophotometric methods use various substrates to measure lipase activity, offering precision, a wide dynamic range, and automation. Enzymatic reaction rate assay uses a synthetic substrate that yields a chromophore upon hydrolysis, offering specificity for pancreatic lipase. Standardization challenges, lipase tests are poorly standardized, making misdiagnosis possible when results come from different analytical systems. Reference intervals. Reference intervals for lipase activity can vary. Method-dependent, suggested upper reference limit, URL, is 45 units per liter at 37 degrees Celsius, with another URL being 64 units per liter at 37 degrees Celsius. No significant differences. There are no significant gender or age-related differences in reference intervals. The second one is amylase, often abbreviated as AMY, plays a vital role in breaking down carbohydrates. Amy's hydrolyze 1, 4, alpha-glucosidic linkages in polysaccharides. They act on both straight-chain, amylose, and branched polyglucans, amylopectin and glycogen. Amylose chains are split at alternate alpha-1 for hemiacetyl links, forming maltose and residual glucose. Branched-chain polyglucans yield maltose, glucose, and limit dextrins. Calcium dependence and activation. Amylase requires calcium for its function and is activated by specific anions. Calcium is essential for Amy function. While full activity occurs in the presence of anions like chloride, bromide, nitrate, cholate, and monohydrogen phosphate, with chloride and bromide being the most effective activators. Distribution and sizes. Amylase is distributed throughout the body, with notable concentrations in certain organs. Salivary glands, the highest concentration of AMY, known as S-type Amy. Pancreas, produces P-type Amy, which is secreted into the intestinal tract. Optimal conditions, intestinal Amy works best under mildly alkaline conditions in the duodenum, where intestinal maltase further hydrolyzes maltose to glucose. Other occurrences. Amylase is also found in various other tissues and fluids. Presence, found in semen, testes, ovaries, fallopian tubes, muscle, lungs, adipose tissue, colostrum, tears, and milk. Tumors and fluids, epithelial tumors of the lung and ovary may contain Amy activity. Acidic and pleural fluids may have Amy due to tumors or pancreatitis. Isoenzymes and modifications. Amylase exists in different isoforms due to various modifications. The main isoenzymes is PMY, pancreatic, and SAMY, salivary gland. Post-translational modifications include deamidation, glycosylation, and deglycosylation, leading to various amy isoforms. Non-enzymic deamidation occurs during sequestration or prolonged storage. Individuals with isolated p amy deficiency experience carbohydrate maldigestion. Clinical significance. Amylase is significant in diagnosing various conditions, especially acute pancreatitis. In acute pancreatitis, Amy activity increases significantly during acute pancreatitis and salivary gland inflammation. Serum Amy rises within 5 to 8 hours of symptom onset and returns to baseline by the third or fourth day. A 4 to 6 fold increase above the upper reference limit, URL, is typical. The magnitude of increase isn't directly related to the severity of pancreatic involvement. Urinary amy also increases due to renal excretion. Specificity and differential diagnosis. Amylase lacks specificity for diagnosing acute pancreatitis. Amy has an accuracy range of 20% to 60% for acute pancreatitis. 
Other intra-abdominal disorders and extrapancreatic conditions can elevate AMY. Direct measurement of pancreatic AMY, PAMI, improves specificity to about 90% when using a threefold URL limit. PAMI remains elevated longer than total AMI in serum. Other conditions with elevated AMI. Various conditions can cause elevated AMI levels. Conditions like cholecystitis can increase serum PMY. Intestinal leakage and other events contribute to elevated PMY. Renal insufficiency leads to proportional increases in serum AMY. Tumors of the lung and ovaries can produce hyperamylosemia. Cases of AMI producing multiple myeloma have been reported. Macroamylases Macroamylases are a special case of AMI complexes. Macroamylases are complexes of ordinary AMI in IgG IgA, found in about 1% of the population. They cannot be filtered by the kidneys due to their large size, causing no clinical symptoms but can be detected during abdominal pain investigations. Exocrine pancreatic insufficiency Low levels of AMI can indicate pancreatic issues. Low serum PAMI activity, below the lower reference limit, indicates exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Intubation tests for pancreatic function may be unnecessary if PAMI is already low. Methods for determination of alpha amylase activity. Various methods exist for measuring AMI activity. Historical assays, saccharogenic, amyloclastic, and chromolytic starch methods were common but have been replaced. Defined substrates, small oligosaccharides like maltopentase and maltotetrose yield stable hydrolysis products. For nitrophenyl, for NP, glycoside substrates. For NP is bonded to oligosaccharides, and AMI hydrolyzes these to produce measurable products. PAMI hydrolyzes these substrates faster than SAMY. Stability issues have been addressed with blocking groups like ethylidine. Novel alpha-glucosidase. Recombinant enzyme AGH211 hydrolyzes nitrophenylated substrates completely, improving reaction stoichiometry. Optimized method. The IFCC recommends a reference measurement procedure for AMI at 37 degrees Celsius. Anticoagulants and stability. Specific factors affect AMI measurements. Common anticoagulants, except heparin, inhibit AMI due to calcium chelation. AMI remains stable during storage for extended periods under various conditions. Reference intervals and analytical methods. Reference intervals and analytical methods for AMI isoenzymes vary. Using the IFCC method, the serum AMI reference interval in whites is 31 to 107 units per liter. Ethnoracial differences have been reported, with higher AMI values in Asians. Analytical methods and reference intervals for amylase isoenzymes include electrophoresis, ion exchange chromatography, isoelectric focusing, and selective inhibition. Monoclonal antibody-based methods are reliable and practical for clinical use. The double monoclonal antibody assay specifically measures PAMI activity and is automated and cost-effective. Macroamylosemia Macroamylosemia can cause false positive PAMI results, but electrophoresis or PEG 6000 precipitation can differentiate it from normal isoenzymes. PAMI represents 40% to 50% of total AMI in healthy adults. Age Considerations Serum PAMI is typically undetectable in children under 6 months and gradually increases to adult levels by age 5. PAMI measurement should be avoided for diagnosing acute pancreatitis in young children. Trypsin Trypsin is a serine protease specific to the pancreas. Active site contains serine and histidine, both crucial for its catalytic activity. Its function is to hydrolyze as peptide bonds involving lysine or arginine and can also act on esters and amides. The human pancreas synthesizes two major trypsins, 1 and 2, as inactive proenzymes called trypsinogens. Trypsinogen, 3, is a minor form. How does trypsin become active? Trypsinogens are stored in zymogen granules and secreted into the duodenum. 
enterokinase or autocatalysis converts trypsinogens to active trypsin. Tri-1 is cationic and tri-2 is anionic, differing in stability in electrophoretic mobility. Natural inhibitors. To prevent unwanted protein breakdown, the body has natural inhibitors. Alpha-1 antitrypsin and alpha-2 macroglobulin block trypsin's active center, protecting plasma and other proteins from hydrolysis by trypsin. Clinical implications. Absence or malfunction of inhibitors can have serious consequences. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, associated with an increased risk of panlobular emphysema. Uninhibited proteases, can negatively impact organ function. Clinical significance of trypsin-1, cationic trypsin. Trypsin-1 plays a significant role in several conditions. Healthy individuals, free trypsinogen-1 is the major form found in serum. Acute pancreatitis. Serum tri-1 rises significantly, 2 to 400 times the URL, after an attack, paralleling serum AME activity. Severity. Mild cases. 80% to 99% of TRI-1 is free trypsinogen-1. Severe cases, free trypsinogen-1 may drop to 30%, with more bound to alpha-1 antitrypsin and alpha-2 macroglobulin. Mortality, in severe cases, mortality rates can be 20% to over 50%. Chronic renal failure, serum TRI-1, AMI, and lip levels are increased. Elevated concentrations must be interpreted with renal failure in mind. Chronic pancreatitis. Without steatorrhea, TRI-1 levels are normal. With steatorrhea, fasting concentrations are extremely low. Relapsing phase, plasma TRI may be significantly increased. Pancreatic carcinoma, TRI concentrations can be high, normal, or low. Testing challenges. TRI-1 testing is difficult with a turnaround time of several hours and has limited clinical value in managing acute pancreatitis. Cystic fibrosis. A genetic disorder affecting the lungs and digestive system, leading to blocked pancreatic ducts and high TRI concentrations in neonates. TRI activity decreases as the disease progresses. Newborn screening involves measuring immunoreactive trypsinogen, one in dried blood specimens and further assessment if initial tests are high. Trypsin, 2, anionic trypsin. Trypsin, 2 also has important clinical implications. Acute pancreatitis, serum trypsinogen, 2 increases more than trypsinogen, 1, with concentrations about 10 times higher. Urinary trypsinogen, 2 measurement shows high sensitivity and negative predictive value for diagnosing acute pancreatitis upon hospital admission but has a low positive predictive value. Methods for determination of trypsin Various methods are used to measure trypsin. Early studies utilized catalytic assays, but these could be affected by other proteolytic enzymes in serum hydrolyzing the same substrates. Commercial immunoassays specifically quantify trypsin, TRI, in blood, marking a significant advancement. TRI-1 immunoassays. Detect trypsinogen-1, TRI-1, and the TRI-1-alpha-1 complex. Do not detect the TRI-1-alpha-2 antitrypsin macroglobulin complex, different assays are needed for this. If you found this video informative, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Be sure to ask for the ASCP short notes, check the description for the link. You can also support us by purchasing products from our store, this helps us continue creating valuable content. Stay tuned for our next video.